Hello, this is ASAP USMLE and today we're going to tell apart the differential diagnoses for dysphagia by organizing them into a simple flowchart. First, we need to listen to the patient's complaint. If they mention trouble initiating the swallowing due to coughing or choking, think of oropharyngeal dysphagia. If they mention associated chest pain, think esophageal. The patient will also mention whether they have difficulty swallowing solids only or both solids and liquids. For oropharyngeal dysphagia with trouble swallowing solids, we suspect obstruction, so a barium swallow will allow us to distinguish between a zinker diverticulum, where we see an outpouching where food gets stuck, causing halitosis or bad breath, plumber vincent syndrome, where we would see upper esophageal webs, or a mass which would be an asymmetrical stricture consistent with a carcinoma. For oropharyngeal dysphagia, with trouble swallowing both solids and liquids, we suspect a motility disorder, possibly secondary to a neuromuscular disorder. For neurogenic causes, we can clinically observe the patient's mental status. If it is altered, we should evaluate for a hemorrhagic stroke by doing a head CT without contrast or evaluate for an ischemic stroke with a brain MRI. If the mental status is normal, we can clinically look for signs of ALS, which is a disorder affecting the upper motor neurons and lower motor neurons, or we can look for symptoms of Parkinsonism. For myogenic causes, it will typically be due to myasthenia gravis and its effect against acetylcholine receptors. For esophageal dysphagia with trouble swallowing solids, we will evaluate for pain, and I'm talking about a generally acute and rather severe kind of pain. If we have that kind of pain, we should evaluate for esophagitis, specifically caustic or corrosive due to ingestion of lye or bleach, so as a clue, look for signs of depression. If there's no acute pain or no pain at all, Check whether the patient's symptoms have progressed from solids only to also liquids. That's what we mean by progressive. If this is the case, a barium swallow will help us distinguish between GERD or stricture, which both have symmetrical narrowing, or a carcinoma, which again will show an asymmetrical growth. If there's no acute pain and the symptoms have not been progressive, then a barium swallow, again, will distinguish between a less painful type of esophagitis, such as eosinophilic, which will present as rings constricting the lower esophagus, or, again, plumber vincent syndrome with upper esophageal webs. Lastly, for esophageal dysphagia, with trouble swallowing both solids and liquids, we will suspect an underlying neuromuscular disorder affecting motility. If there are symptoms of heartburn, suspect scleroderma, where the lower esophageal sphincter remains too open, allowing gastric contents to travel up, similar to GERD. If there are no symptoms of heartburn, perform a manometry or, alternatively, a barium swallow. If they are negative, this is possibly diffuse esophageal spasms, since they usually have normal findings between episodes. A good clue for this is a patient with recurrent symptoms of a myocardial infarction while not actually having it. Finally, a manometry that shows decreased or absent peristalsis indicates achalasia. If there's anything you have learned from this video is that at the very least, when in doubt, a barium swallow is a pretty safe answer choice for diagnosing dysphagia. I'm just kidding. So that is it for differential diagnosis of dysphagia. Thank you for watching. I hope it was helpful. Study hard. Good luck on your exams. And I'll see you on the next one. Bye.